Hey everyone, my name is Chris from Create Daily. Today I welcome you to part one of three in this mini series of how you can animate archived images using Adobe Photoshop and After Effects. In this video, I will show you how to create a 3D parallax animation from scratch. You can pull off this effect with just about any photo, but my favorite way to do it is with archived imagery. I'm gonna show you how to separate your foreground and background subjects in Photoshop, and then we'll animate our 3D camera in After Effects. And as always, I have some special tips to share that will level up your next project when you use this effect. So stick around, it's time to dive in. So as you saw in the example, what we're going to do is be separating our foreground from our background. In this case, our foreground is the baseball players and our background's the stadium. And once we take out our baseball players, what we need to do is fill that background back in. So when we jump back into After Effects, we're able to create some 3D space and really be able to pull off that parallax effect. Now that might all sound complicated, but I promise you it's much easier than you think. So let's get started. So we're in Photoshop here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is actually duplicate my original image. Uh, this is a personal preference of mine. I like doing this because when I edit images, I like to reference the original to make sure that it doesn't look too edited, if that makes sense. So we're just gonna deselect that, stay on our copy, and what we're gonna do now is we have our little AI bar here, but you see here we're able to select the subject or even remove the background. What we're gonna do is actually select the subject. And with just one click of a button, we're already mostly there on cropping on our object, but there's still more work that needs to be done. So as we zoom in here, you're seeing that, you know, we're missing part of the, the base, there's gaps between the arms, we don't have the foot right here, so there are areas where we do need to fix this, but as you saw with one click of a button, it was really simple to, to get started already. So I'm just gonna zoom in here and we're going to pull out our lasso tool and we are going to make some updates to cropping this out correctly. So what I'm gonna be doing is just drawing around here with the lasso. Now this doesn't have to be perfect, mainly because it's an older photo. And man, you see when we zoom in here, it is so grainy, so old, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it, you want to get pretty close. So you don't want any weird edges or anything popping up, and that's what really what we're eliminating here. Now we've properly outlined our players. Now what we need to do is actually mask them out. So what I'm gonna do is go to select, modify, feather, and we will leave this at 1.5. Now what we're gonna do is actually click this masking button and right there we have our original and we have our after. So we see how this looks here. They will all look properly cropped out. I'm actually going to duplicate this original one more time and we are going to label this background and we will label this players. All right, now to remove the players from the background, what we need to do is click back on our mask layer and click control and then uh, click and we have our players outlined again. We're going to hide the players. We're gonna click on our background layer, go to select, modify, expand, and we will expand it by 10 pixels. Ideally, if you're using a photo that has color, you could use generative fill, but at the time of making this video, Photoshop doesn't support generative fill for grayscale images. So we're gonna use content aware fill. So I'm gonna click to shift backspace and you're gonna see this content aware window pop up. We're gonna leave all the settings the same and then we're gonna click okay. And just like that, we see the outline of our players, but they're mostly removed. Now there are some smudges and areas that we, you know, could improve and work on. So, you know, for example, this outline right here, I could just highlight this, do the same process. Looks a little bit better here. Same thing. Looks good. Now if we're concerned with how kind of some of these smudges look, another way we can go about this is actually go to our clone stamp tool and Increase the size of this. Now you can adjust the opacity and flow settings of how strong you want your clone stamp to be, but we could take information from one part of the image. So by holding Alt click and going here and just bringing that over a little bit. And what we're doing now is just eliminating some of these smudges. Without further ado, we are going to jump in After Effects and start animating. So we just brought our Photoshop layer into After Effects. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make these layers 3D. And right away, when you make a layer 3D, you go from having an X and Y parameter on the position to having an X, Y, and Z parameter. And Z space is 3D space. So let me show you what I mean by that. We'll jump into view here. And uh, we see right now that right now everything is flat because both parameters of the players and background are at zero. But when I change my background to let's say 8,000, 
pixels in Z space and uh, our players being 2000 pixels, they are now further away from our viewfinder. They are further away from what we're seeing and they're more distant. So that's all Z space is. And that is how you really distant things out. So I just wanted to provide a visualization so you can understand. So when we go back into one view here, you see that obviously the further we're away from something, the smaller it's gonna get. But to combat that, what we're gonna do is actually scale our images back up. And I want to make these proportionate. And to know if they're proportionate, we have this bounding box right outside our layer here. And this is where it was, and we're gonna bring it back. And with this bounding box, we're actually going to scale it up to where it was when it had started, um, when it was a 2D image. And same thing with these baseball players. So I'm gonna scale these up. So now, even though these are 6,000 pixels apart in Z space, which is a huge thing you wanna do when you're uh, doing a parallax animation. The next thing we're gonna do is add a 3D camera. So we'll go to layer, new camera. We'll make it a two note camera. We'll leave it at 50 millimeters. And for now we will leave depth of field checked off. I'm gonna click okay here. And right away, I'll show you. When I zoom in with this camera, you start to see the actual parallax going to work. And this is where the fun starts, right? So in order to actually animate the parallax itself, I'm gonna select my keyframe here for position. I'm gonna go down and I'm going to zoom in. And I'm gonna bring this back out here. This is what we have so far. So you see there's some depth between the actual players and the background itself, which looks really cool. But we're gonna take that a step further and we are going to click on our keyframes and click F9 for easy ease. This is looking good so far and this is really how you pull off a parallax effect, but let's amplify it and add a little bit more sauce. What I'm gonna do is actually bring these dust particles in and I'm gonna change the blend mode to screen and I'm gonna make these 3D as well. And similar to before, I actually need to scale these up so so it's in the entire composition itself. So I'm just scaling this up here so the bounding box is uh, right outside the composition itself. And when we scrub through here, we see that our dust particles are also now in 3D space. And by default, when you make a layer 3D, it's at zero in Z space. So that's what we did with our dust particles. But let's say we wanted to actually put these behind the baseball player so we could see them a little bit better. Well, that's really easy to do. We'll go back to our two view here. And for those who are wondering, I'm in custom view one. There's a bunch of different views here, but I'm in custom view one. Um, I'm going to just bring this out a little bit so we can see everything, make some adjustments. Um, so I know my players are at 2000 pixels in Z space. So if I wanted to put these dust particles behind the baseball players, I would just have to pick a number higher than that. So I'm just gonna do 2500. And right away, they are now right behind the baseball player. So it's really simple. But as I mentioned before, when you push things further back into Z space, it will look smaller in your composition. So to compensate, we need to scale these back up again. And things are starting to look better, but I actually wanna make some tweaks to these dust particles. So there's a few things we can do. The first thing is say we wanted them, but we didn't wanna see them as much. It's as simple as dropping the opacity. So right away, when you drop the opacity, they're there, but it's a lot more subtle. And that's kind of the look that we're going for. Uh, another thing we could do is bring them back up to 100 and add a glow. I have Deep Glow, which is a paid plugin, but it looks really cool when you add an effect like this. It looks a little bit dreamier, and if we wanted, we could kind of pick the best of both worlds. So we could have the Deep Glow on, and we can also drop the opacity, let's say down to 50. And right away, this is the look that we have, and it looks really cool. So I like the distance I have between my players and my background and the dust particles. Now what we wanna do is add one last piece of sauce, and that is actually focusing. So this is a 3D camera, and 3D cameras can focus just like regular cameras can. So at the beginning, when we were adding a camera, we left depth of field checked off. The reason we did that is because when you leave depth of field checked on, it actually slows down the render time when you're editing. So I like to leave that off and I don't like to mess with focusing or anything like that with 3D cameras until the very end of doing uh, a project like this. So I'm gonna put this on right now. Another thing is that typically on a camera, the lower your aperture, the lower your f-stop, the more blurry it gets, the more shallow depth of field you have. Well, in After Effects, it's backwards. You actually have to crank that number up. So it could be a little bit confusing. So I'm actually gonna bring this number up. And right away, what you see when I bring this number up, that the background starts to get blurrier and blurrier. And now you could, I mean, you could barely see it. It's really blurry. I'm gonna drop this down to 1200 here. And so this is starting to look better, but I wanna show you guys a cool trick. So we're gonna go back to two view here and I'm going to change custom view to top. And I'm gonna go back out here and we'll click on our camera. 
Now we could do a few really cool things by uh, enabling blur. One thing we could do is actually do a rack focus. So the camera has an option called focus distance and focus distance here, you could see it's this moving bar and you see all of these different layers. And if you're not sure what's what, you could just click, oh, okay, dust layers here, players are there. I might actually move players up just to stay organized. So we have players, dust, and then background is way back there. So we have all of these different layers in different parts of Z space. Now, what I could do is change the focus distance all the way back to where our background is. And then I could set a keyframe and I can go up a second or two, and then we can go up to our players like this. Zoom in here and get as accurate as we can. Oh, this is looking good. So right away we could have a rack focus focusing from the background to the players itself as it's zooming in. So you can get crazy with it. So you could do a rack focus with it. You could also do something that I think is really important, which is actually set a defined focus distance. So I'm gonna delete our focus distance for right now. And I'm gonna go back to one view and I'm gonna show you guys the shortcut that is going to change the game with how you use After Effects cameras. So what I'm gonna do is click on camera and players. I'm gonna go to layer camera and link focus distance to layer. And we actually now have a fixed focus distance on this layer. So it is exact every time. And no matter where we go in Z space, the actual camera will remain focused on these players the entire time, which is really cool. When I go to our camera itself, we can see under camera options, focus distance uh, before we were adjusting it manually. Now it created this expression where it's linking to the actual players layer that we have. And this is how you create a parallax effect using an archival photo or any photo for that matter. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Check out parts two and three in the description below. Thanks for watching and stay creative.